Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Joining us now is the award-winning author and journalist, Melinda Ferguson, who burst onto the local literary scene with her hard-hitting memoir, Smacked, a harrowing true story of addiction to survival in 2010, where she shared her honest and brutal story of overcoming addiction. Welcome, Melinda. Hi, Jean. Jean. I mean, <laughs> how incredible and brutally honest your books are. Yeah. You've just released the third of your memoir, Trilogy. Mm. Can you quickly give us a, like a brief overview of what the, the previous two were about before we get into Okay, I'm crashed. going to be really quick. Just girl, tell us. Um, <laughs> high achieving girl, you know, does well at school and everything, uh, experience with heroin and crack, becomes a complete junkie, um, then has an incredible downward spiral, lands up in Hillbrow on the street, totally f trashed. Um, and basically, that was my first book, Smacked. Um, I then How old were you when this happened to well, you? Well, you see, I wasn't like a little young person. I started experimenting with hard drugs when I was about 24. Okay. By the time I got clean, I was 33. Yeah. So I spent like seven, eight years completely just downward spiraling, as, as what happens sure, with drugs. Sure, sure. And, and I was in the film industry. I was an actress. I was doing well. But the drugs just took everything. Um, what led you, sorry, I keep, I keep, but I no, want to no. know, what led you to that point of, of starting? Because, I mean, it's not like you were smoking weed. You went f straight on well, to no, crack Well, no, no, I heroin. was smoking weed before. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, the gateway drug thing was worked 100% okay, with so me. so there was I a was gateway drinking, drug. I smoked weed. I thought I was fabulous. I, I used to, you know, just do a lot of experimentation. And yeah. I was a curious kid at school, but I was also very um, rebellious. Okay. And when I first met heroin, I really thought it was a kind of a sexy, secretive, dark, interesting thing to do. And I wanted to say, I've smoked heroin. It was one of those things. I don't know, most people don't have it on their bucket list. No. I did. But is it true that when they say the first time you try heroin, you're addicted? Well, I was. And, you... and I'm an, okay. an addictive person, so it was yeah. tickets for me. Um, crack as well. I mean, crack and heroin, using them together. Um, the high and the low. You know, heroin makes you very dreamy. It makes yeah. you very calm, actually. Crack makes you in incredibly insane, hyper cocaine. Yeah. So the two of those drugs uh, were just, I don't know, I found them incredibly addictive. Yeah. And um, before long, I mean, after two weeks, I was using heroin almost every day after first trying. Yeah. And then my life just started, you know, I was still making films. I was in the film industry making documentaries and we'd smoke a budget up. Then we'd, you know, land up in big trouble. And so, you know, as, you, you, as an addict, you shift goalposts all the time. Mm. So I always used to say, oh, well, I don't spike. So I'm okay. I just smoke So it. you would literally smoke it? Uh, on tinfoil, actually, okay. on, like that. But I'm not going to experiment. I'm not going to no, show no, you no. now in the kitchen. But it's so h funny how how easily everything then unraveled around you mm. just within a week, you'd say? Well, no, not within a... Look, in the beginning, you, you, you have a semblance of normality. No one knew for about two years. Yeah. But I know that within a week of taking it, I was heading for disaster. It took a lot longer, I think, for other people to notice and for people to see the complete chaos that, that, that my life landed up being in. So your first books cover... Cover first that. cover that. Then you got clean for 15 years. Yes, and in, the, in, in my first book, Smacked, I get clean, I, go on, I, I land up on a homeless farm. It, it was quite a terribly hard way of getting clean. I didn't go to a cushy rehab. Um, so my first book dealt with that, and it was a kind of the crawling up out of, out of this terrible addiction into sobriety. Yeah. And then my second book, Hooked, I was about 10 years clean when that came out. Yeah. And that was more about internet addiction because, you know, <laughs> an addict. You cross addict. Cross addict. Sure. And, I mean, the world, I think, is pretty addicted anyway, as the yeah. doctor earlier was saying. We're all trying to find a fix. We're trying to fill ourselves up. The internet, Facebook, all those kinds of things was like mother's milk to me in sobriety. I might not have been using drugs or alcohol, but I was, like, obsessed with the internet. Yeah. I still am, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's so not like I'm, I. like... I've actually, I'm paranoid <laughs> it's not, now. Yeah. This it's not me. like I'm kind of clean on that. It's going to take probably someone smashing all my machines up for yeah. me to actually stop. But it's funny how you recognise that as an addiction as well. And oh, I think yeah. a lot of people maybe suffer from that and don't acknowledge it as, oh, I've actually, well, you know, I need a social media detox. They say, I mean, a Dacha addict will become very um, unavailable. Well, mm. guess what? When you're sitting doing 
and social media and your partner sitting next to you and you're both looking at your tablets all night, that's also unavailable. Exactly. You know, so it's the same kind of impulse, the, the need to fill yourself up and the fear maybe to address your fears inside. Yeah. And that's what that book was about. Now, the third <laughs> book, Crashed, is yes. because on the 15th day celebration, celebrating your yes. sobriety, mm. what happened? It was actually on my 14-year uh, clean birthday. Okay. Yes, let's get the numbers right. Yeah. So it was, my, it was a day after my 14-year clean birthday, and I've become a motoring journalist. Yeah. In my sobriety, I then loved cars, so I became a bit addicted to cars, and... I managed to get a Ferrari, a, a 3.2 3 million rand Ferrari to test drive for the day yeah. to celebrate. And on the way back to Vigli, oh, I'm not supposed to mention names. Okay, so on the way back to some Italian <laughs> car dealer, I, I landed up having a, a monumental accident. You I basically wrote off this 3.2 3, 3, 3 million rand Ferrari. Not willingly, clearly. No, what happened? I overtook a truck and I didn't see a robot because a tree had grown over a robot in the middle of Benmore. And I literally, as I got in front of the truck, I looked up and the robot was red. And I was in the middle and the, uh, 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 I won't mention the other name of the car, but that big car came smashing through and hit me in the, in the right hand side. And okay, the, car, the car was absolutely totaled, but you weren't so hard yourself. No, you, you no, were, I you was were fine. In a critical condition? No, or? no, darling. I, I walked out without a bruise. No. Maybe See, a good bit cars. of a. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had a bit of whiplash and I, I did have a bit of a bruise from the airbag. Okay. But I mean, compared to what could have happened. Exactly. And I had three of my colleagues with me in the car. It was a four seater. So, I mean, it was a miracle. We, wow. we escaped without uh, any injury. And, but I had an enormous bill given to me <laughs> to, to, to... Did you have to pay for the car? Because now you've got to buy the car since it's written off. Yeah, look, insurance was all in place, but there's always excess. <clears throat> okay. In the end, I had about a 650,000 rand bill given to wow. me as a kind of, well, okay, we'll pay for this, but here's your bill. And luckily I got an attorney and I landed up having to go back at the people I was working for and I landed up walking away from that. I wow. walk away from many things in my life, I think. So, Crash d tells that story. Did you ever think when you started writing your memoir that it would take three books to tell the full story? No. And someone said the other day to me, you better not do something else crazy because you're going to have to write another one. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that's the thing. I think what I do in my life is I've always managed to turn disasters into blessings. Yeah. It's a kind of Buddhist idea of, like, take your curse and make it your blessing. And... I think that's what I've, I've managed to do. I mean, my addiction could have really taken me out. I mean, many addicts don't recover into a world that they can show their faces in again. Exactly. And I've been very out, out there with my stuff. I think speaking about addiction, speaking about our darkness mm. is something that is incredibly important in, in order to get better. Do you think that was your particular process within your recovery that has actually helped you? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, writing about it being unashamed. You know, you get it. I, I put my children, I mean, in a lot of danger. I had two little boys. I was a, a drug addicted mother. Wow. Um, there were a lot of shameful things that I did in my addiction. But somehow when I brought them out into the light and I started dealing with them and acknowledging them and yeah. admitting them and the whole thing of getting out of denial. That's when I think I started the healing process. Well, Melinda, I've had a look at a couple of pages, and it is so well written and an absolute, absolute pain turner, a, a page turner. I'm so and pain turner. <laughs> pain turner. But yeah. I'm so happy that this must have been an amazing cathartic experience for you, and I really hope that everybody reads from it and grows from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, today you also stand a chance to win a set of all three of Melinda's books, Smashed, Hooked and Crashed. All you need to do is SMS the keyword express, your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost 1 rand 50 each, T's and C's apply, and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. How are you doing, YouTube fam? Thank you so much for watching, sharing, and commenting. We love hearing from you, so be sure to keep up to date with all things Afternoon Express by clicking the subscribe button right here.